flyers are the often overlooked wallpaper of our organizations and our hallways and our streets. In this short video, I'm going to focus on three types of flyers, and first, the rhetorical moves that they make. Then, second, we'll talk about the design elements put to use in each flyer. The purpose of this video is to help us look at the work that flyers do so we can design better, more persuasive flyers. And I'm sure you guys have found yourself walking along a sidewalk or a street and seeing something like this or this, this, perhaps in a coffee shop or this or this. Before we dig into the work that flyers do, I have to share a few of my all-time favorite flyers because flyers aren't always serious business. So we have this and this. Complimentary mustaches. And perhaps one of my all-time favorites that's become essentially an internet meme, Cat Found. Not very friendly. I think she might be scared. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of my system, let's get serious and focus on the work that flyers do. Flyers announce, inform, and persuade. To get a better sense of how they do so, we're going to focus in on one example of each. So let's talk first about the rhetorical work that this flyer does, and this is a flyer designed to announce. First, audience. The audience for this flyer is undergraduate students, specifically at Michigan State University. The headline reads, Meet Potential Employers. The designer of this flyer knew how to grab the attention of this particular audience, meet potential employers, and perhaps find some leads on jobs. The purpose is to announce to the audience a particular event. The title of the event is here. The date and time the event is to be held is included. The room in which the event will be held is included. All key elements for getting a particular audience to a specific place on a said day and time. As for context, this flyer has to stand out in a sea of other flyers. The attention-grabbing headline pops and the appealing blue background hones the eye to the key details about the event. And I want to talk about context in a second way. For Lesson 7, we talked about working with brand standards and identity guidelines. And I think this flyer, which works to announce, also serves its context well in meeting MSU-specific brand standards. The font face used for the entire flyer is Gotham. The headline is in the official MSU green. The arrow design lower on the flyer is part of the university's graphic standard. And then the circle graphic is the Department of Geography's graphic standard. So that's audience purpose and context. Let's talk a bit more about the rhetorical work happening here. I think this flyer, in both its textual and design elements, does a good job appealing to logos, or logic. Meet potential employers. It'd be logical for you to want to do so. I also think this is a good example of ethos. The Department of Geography builds their own credibility by calling this a career and internship event and by noting that attendees can also hear about job prospects and what people in geography careers do. As for the design work of this flyer, offering an announcement, the contrast here is excellent. The Spartan green heading pops on the white background, the black text stands out on the blue background. Across the flyer, the Gotham font is repeated in different sizes and different weights. The body text appears all center lined, the two graphic arrows appear in close proximity, as does the web info and social media icons for the organization. Let's toggle next to a flyer that informs. This is a flyer by the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency. As for the rhetorical work, the primary audience here is bikers. The secondary audience might be drivers who have to watch out for bikers. The flyer informs bikers that cyclists stopped in bike boxes are easily seen by motorists improving safety at intersections. So the purpose of this flyer is to inform bikers as to the best place to stop. I found this flyer online, so I'm not entirely sure what the larger context of the flyer is. 
Um, it's saved on the SFMTA website where people uh, look for information about bike and car safety. I'd also guess that it could be publicly posted in high traffic bike areas, maybe distributed to businesses to post around offices, especially if there's um, a large population of people who bike to work. It likely was sent out to schools and libraries. As for the other rhetorical work happening here, I'd argue that this flyer inform, uh, that informs draws on ethos. The statement, cyclists stopped in bike boxes are easily seen by motorists improving safety at intersections. This statement pulls at the ethical character of the reader. Don't you, reader, as a biker, want to make intersections safer? And I think we can definitely argue that that's a logical appeal, too. As for the design work, Contrast is employed here in a handful of ways, but I think the two best examples are first, the bold white title on the green background, and second, the two stacked arrow graphics, which appear in bold black and white. As for repetition, the attention-grabbing arrow graphic appears twice, and they appear with flush left text alignment. The key message, cyclist stop, appears below the key graphic box, and finally, and again, the two arrow boxes appear in close proximity. So that's an example of a flyer that announces and a flyer that informs. Let's look at a flyer that persuades. As for the rhetorical work here, the audience is pet owners. The logo of the organization nicely appeals to people who love animals. We see a silhouette of a dog and a cat with a heart in the middle. The purpose of this persuasive flyer is pretty clear and is stated as a directive or a command. Spay or neuter them. This is another example I found online, so the context is a bit blurry. I guess that this is a flyer the organization posted in local pet stores and local pet supply stores. They might have also shared the, post, the flyer at local animal shelters and perhaps in community spaces um, and community centers like the YMCA and more. I would argue that this persuasive flyer is doing ethos-based work, appealing to the ethical character of its audience. Certainly it does so in a suggestive way. I think if they wanted to make a stronger ethical and also pathos-based appeal, they might have included copy like this, more than one million cats and dogs are needlessly killed each year. They could have also potentially engaged logos visually with a design like this that visually shows the kittens and puppies. To return to the original and talk a bit about the design work here, contrast is nicely deployed with the olive green and the medium pine green with the gray and the white. The contrast between the two greens is fairly minimal, but it's, it's still clear and readable. The dog silhouette and the cat silhouette are repeated both in the organization's logo and in the graphics of the cat and dog. <laughs> Likewise, the, the cute band-aid icon is repeated on each animal silhouette. The spay or neuter them text is somewhat randomly aligned, um, both horizontally and vertically, but it works in a sort of visually catchy way. The contact info is left aligned, ragged right, with the organization's logo aligned toward the top of the page. The contact info is in close proximity, as are the bottom two silhouettes. With the rhetorical and design considerations in mind, I, I want to offer one final suggestion in terms of flyers, and that suggestion is not to reinvent the wheel. At the Creativity Lab I run at MSU for a while, our interns were designing a new flyer from scratch for each event we hosted or held or co-sponsored. It got pretty ridiculous. We host between 20 to 30 events every semester, and that was a lot of time spent crafting 20 to 30 flyers, not to mention the time spent on social media campaigning, writing newsletter articles about the events, and, and other tasks we had to accomplish. So finally, one of our graphic design interns took the lead and created a template for our other interns and research fellows to use. Even the people who weren't really comfortable working in InDesign could open the template and replace the placeholder text and image. It saved us a ton of time and energy, and it also did really important work for us in creating a brand identity. No longer did we have 20 or 30 different looking circulating flyers floating around. Instead, we had 20 or 30 flyers similar in design. When people saw them, they knew they were creativity exploratory flyers. So when you're crafting a flyer to announce, inform, or persuade, you should have two key sets of considerations. First, the rhetorical work the flyer needs to do, engaging audience, purpose, and context, um, and putting ethos, pathos, and logos to work. 
And second, the design work the flyer needs to do. The deliberate decisions you need to make about color, typography, graphics, and more, guided by contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity.